Team Bayfield, support the scene. We're back with another one. This time we have Dead Beyond Fear. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. What's going on? I always love talking to metal bands because you have the harshest names possible. So I want to know, how did Dead Beyond Fear come to exist? Uh, the band in general? Sure. Um, I don't know. Uh, Dead Beyond Fear was actually a, a, a song that uh, me and Sean... Weston had uh, in an, in a previous band, and uh, we, we just liked the the title and the the track so much that we just decided to adhere to it, and uh, that's basically how Dead Beyond Fear became the, the band. Just expanding on kind of what Richard said, how did I, I? This is the standard question I ask for for most of the guests we have on here. How did you guys meet, and why does your dynamic work as well as it does? Um, well, the great thing was one day I just shot out a message to like Barry Metal. I was like, I think it was maybe even Ontario Metal. I was like, is there such thing as a metal basis? And so I got connected with Mark and for years uh, we just chatted. We stayed in the in uh, conversation and Matt and I met in high school. And we were jamming like sporadically throughout our 20s. And then finally things just kind of came to a T where Mark and Phil and Sean were working together. And Mark was like, let's get Matt and eventually me on board and uh we regrouped together and wrote the album and uh released that in 2019. Yeah, is, kinda, is, uh, Sean, is Sean hiding a body somewhere? Yeah, he's at the trailer. <laughs> You're in the middle of the woods. Which project? Yeah. <laughs> Always it was, in the uh, woods. Yeah, pretty much. I don't That's know if this is the start of a horror movie or a porno. <laughs> the horror porno <laughs> yeah i don't know it's a good thing but yeah um it's kind of interesting because it was like uh matt chelsea and ourselves were, were more into the more heavier like metal more into like death metal and stuff like the thrashy and then uh sean and phil are more of like the like metalcore and like groove and like very melodic stuff so when we came together it was like this like we say a frankenstein uh and it really it just really worked out like especially matt and sean how they write together and then i lay in there with it and it's like those two they just have this weird style how they work because they're completely different guitar players so it really it transposes into the music So you had uh, Malice for the Hated Enemy, which already is such a metal fucking album name. <laughs> uh, so you released that October of 2019. Absolutely brutal. So what was the writing process and the creation of this album? Like, how the hell did you make this nasty monster? Uh, one riffs at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> it's been years. It, was, it took years. Like, me and Sean, we've been working on, on a lot of those songs uh for like 15 years so uh and then uh, we wrote a couple together as us five and they just worked really really well and then uh, we just kept just being able to write songs because it just worked so good and we were all willing and knew what it took to put in the work to be a successful band so we just kept working at it just kept writing and like you know we completely looked inside and completely analyzed ourselves while we were writing this record and um like you know if you read through the lyrics and everything it's very personable uh deals with a, a lot of the the darker things in lives like you know that may drag you down and uh all five of us can all all relate to the album in a sense so it worked really good and i think that we um we did uh, a really good job on uh, capturing the emotion in the album for the most part uh, but nothing me beats our, our live performance for sure the Dead Beyond Fear live experience how would you sum it up to somebody who hasn't seen you play live yet 
There's a lot of uh, fuck yeahs going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like you say it, the crowd says it, you say it. It just kind of goes back and forth. It's kind of a thing. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we just like to get up there and throw down, man. And just like, you know, give ourselves a whiplash and shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Rock out, perform, man. Like, I don't know, me, myself. Uh, I totally feed off of the crowd and uh, I feed off my bandmates. So if everything's going well, then you're going to get one hell of a performance. Well, one thing too is the energy. Like I miss that live style energy because you can't replicate that. And like even, you know, with the studio, you can't replicate that live energy sound. And I remember we were, I think it was Brantford one time. And, you know, we just kind of picked this, like, thing up, and we're the opener for the thing, and there was, like, you know, a couple people in the crowd, and we're like, fuck it, it's jam night, let's just try something kind of here, right? Yeah. It just picked up, and by the time we looked up, there was, like, you know, the crowd started filling in, everyone was jamming, it was fucking awesome. If you yeah. play it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just kind of catches people off guard, and, yeah. and next thing you know, it's like everybody's into it, and we've had this, like, feedback. We just weren't – we didn't know what was going to happen when we started, and it's just like we don't expect the outcome, and it, it's it's fucking awesome. We feed off it. Mm -hmm. So Dead Beyond Fear built like a really impressive and a really committed uh, following in the relatively short amount of time since this band has existed. What do you think it is about the band that brings people in and then makes them come back for more? I think the thing about us is, yeah, we do have that contrast of sound where it's going to turn your head if you're just, if you just stumble into the bar, like when, when they were open, you're going to pay attention and you're going to see the song through. And like, yeah, if you don't like that song, you're going to hear the next song and be like, whoa, that was really if that's the same bit like and uh we just continuously like not like reinventing the wheel but we like to push the envelope of our own like abilities and like we write songs that like, sometimes <laughs> sometimes we can't even play <laughs> like, <that's laughs> yeah. but like yeah. we put we put like our blood like our sweat like our, our tears our hair like our teeth like <laughs> we put everything into it so Sorry, I just got lost on the trip. Are we inside of a fridge now? Yeah, what are you doing there, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't just switch to me. I was quiet. <laughs> that part you out. buried half of it in the woods. Stick the other, stuck the other half in your freezer. <laughs> You've shared the stage with a lot of great bands, including like Kavara, Unearth, Darkest Hour. Are there any other bands that are on like your bucket list to be on a bill with? Ooh, Chelsea looks that. like she just got super hyped to answer this question. Yeah, Chelsea, I think I you're up first. I think Phil and I would agree. Like, Subo Psycho. Oh, that, that would be fun. Yeah. Uh, I want to say like... Uh, born of osiris uh like guys like that like i love 36 crazy fist so they'd have to be on there too i uh, miss may i well bucket list would be lamb of god but honestly <laughs> like, i fuck it let's the list but if we could make it like with in canada our expire <laughs> So you mentioned before, it's like on your Facebook and YouTube accounts, you mentioned you hinted at the Chamber of Isolation. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, it's actually uh, in the works. Uh, we're probably about three quarters of the way uh, written on it. But uh, with the whole pandemic and everything, we haven't had uh, much time to get together and uh, to continue writing the rest of the tracks needed for us to get into the studio. But uh, we have been writing individually, so hopefully when we are able to link back up, that we'll just be able to to knock out the next few songs and be able to get in the studio right away. Uh, I think think we have nine tracks, and we plan on doing another, another 13 again. So we're hitting it with a full, full length for sure. I think with the experience we had in the studio and playing these shows together and the chemistry, uh, what we're writing this time is a, a kind of like more mature and it's got a nice evolved sound to it. Um, there's more musicianship behind, behind it and different different things that we're kind of bringing into it. 
Um, there is some heavy, heavy emotion in some of the songs that some of us writ, uh, like during the lockdowns and stuff. Some there are some messages yeah. in there too, uh, personal stuff too. So I think there's going to be some pretty emotional parts to it, uh, but it's very aggressive parts too that we more aggressive than we've written before. I find it so soulful, but yet brutal and a lot tighter. Like we'll be sit like you know how we jam out is we'll rip a song, but we you know play improv on certain parts or stuff. You know if it comes to mind, half the time I look over at Chelsea and she just throws this fucking insane drum kick, but it's just on point and just insane, and I'm like blown away. And the sound that comes in when everything comes together just <laughs> right at you. It's oh. I'm excited for this album. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Wait, wait till we drop in your soul. <laughs> <laughs> I've been spending a lot of time um, uh, working on band merch and like, you know, getting different designs and stuff like that. So uh, there'll, there'll be a lot of new, new t-shirts flying around for Dead Beyond Fear when we hit the venues and some whatnot. So that's looking up. Because I know plenty of people, I'm pretty sure all they wear is band merch. So after the last year and a half, they need new threads. Everything else is too thin. <laughs> It's been washed out. We need more band merch. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll got, we got them covered. <laughs> got a hole in my band shirt right here, man. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Oh, uh, get this guy a shit. <laughs> With Dead Beyond Fear, are there any particular, like, artists or bands that you draw from for influence? Uh, me, I pick my influences up in the weirdest spots. It's usually not even metal-related. Um, like sometimes it is like, uh, like lately I've been listening to a, a, a lot of, uh, a spirit box and, uh, sumo psycho, uh, ginger, a lot, a lot of female vocalists have been really, uh, really inspiring me lately to kind of like, you know, step out of my vocal range and kind of like, you know, do other things and like, uh, just made me work on different techniques and stuff, just kind of evolving myself right now musically and uh, like uh, i'm huge into like southern rock uh so like rival songs i've been rock got the beard for it man that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah Everybody um i really you. borrow uh a lot of like inspiration from the recent uh well uh art cruise and chris adler from lamb of god but um also like the new deftones album like got me on a huge wormhole for deftones just going back into my kind of youth and just some of those solid um just really solid like like just really yeah just groovy uh taking a bit away from the double pedal but also like Vinnie paul and mario de Clante from tajira uh has been my number one influence like over the last like two two years or so so you're thinking like i grew up on metallica maiden judas priest like that old metal still dope to this day black sabbath but I then it's all... his sister behind me here on the wall <laughs> yeah, yeah lamb of god and like like i said art like our psychroptic necrophagist dream theater freaking polyphia like whatever i listen to some element of that will just come into whatever it plays you know it's weird like no dope yeah, I can definitely hear with your writing, too, with just some of your solos. I can hear that now in the new stuff, too. Yeah, I'm going to say, like, uh, bass players and stuff like that, like some of them out there, like really old, like psychedelic stuff from, like, Yes, uh, Rick Wakeman, um, stuff that just is, like, just so groovy. Uh, more modern stuff I've been listening to, like uh, Evan Brewer. Um, I, sorry, I can't think of his name right now from Intervals. Um yeah, actually, what I really picked up on, I've been watching his lessons and things like that. Uh, as comedic, you see, is Davey 504. You know, like, slap like now, you know, the YouTube guy, the Italian bass player. But uh, yeah, little things I can pick up from those guys. And it's just all about what I can do with the groove and and not so much just play as fast as I could, which I wanted. And I learned that. And then it, I, I even learned even more being with these guys. I don't know, the usual Lamb of God has a lady dying. I don't know. I just follow Matt. <laughs> John listens to so much different music. It's he's always like when you're at his place, like after jam, there's you'll listen to anything. 
Yeah. Um, if you had the opportunity to play one of your songs in front of any person, living or dead, what song would it be and who would you play it for? That's a dope question. I mean, and happy birthday, Sir Paul McCartney. I think that would be it for me. Uh, I'm just looking at my Beatles poster, but what song? Jeez. I, uh, maybe Wings. That would be fitting, wouldn't it? Like, <laughs> throw that one out of In the Styling of Wings, here's our offering Wings. <laughs> Has like 15 different parts that don't seem to. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd say as weird um coincidences it is like that we wrote the album and we wrote world and rune and then several months later the pandemic happened i'd like to write like when things come back together and it's like the first shows play that song and the the emotion that would pour out in that song well wing was soulful but what's the new one chelsea which one's that one called uh your final place of rest yeah uh, so yeah. This one, yeah yeah if i could play this for anybody Shit. That's another. That's another. Going to be another long song on the album too. <laughs> it's dirty, man. I play for Mark Morton. I'd <laughs> uh, play World of Ruins for sure. Right on. Hell All yeah. the voice. For sure, Cher would dig it. Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, I'd have to be forgotten for some uh, children because it's got swearing in it. <laughs> uh. Thank you all so much for taking the time to talk to us. Obviously, it's getting dark for uh, for other people. This is the latest interview I think we've ever done. So thank right. you for taking the time. Uh, before we say goodbye, are there any local bands that people should be listening to right now? Uh, definitely Kavara. Don Valley, uh, Particle Apart, uh, Halfway Through Hell, to name a few, Lost Light, uh, Tangents. Uh, there's so much good local talent around here. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Wormhust, <laughs> Single Wound, uh, Fractured, uh, oh, yeah. Esoteric Doctrine. There's a band out in London called Skyless. They, uh, they shred by face off. They were so oh, yeah. fast. And, and uh, there's a new project uh, coming out with uh, Dougie Drums from halfway through hell the set sail punk pop, it's like a more of a punk band um malice divine if you're into kind of melodic like black everybody from dead beyond fear alex thank you all for joining us tonight it's been awesome to talk to you uh i hope we can all be in a dark nasty club together again soon because I, I need right. my face to be melted off it's been forever so mm -hmm. until that time happens again uh take care right. can't wait to hear the new material and hopefully we'll see you soon absolutely thank you richard Cheers, thank you.